You got me into comedy, which I will always oh, follow. Oh, yeah, Michael Gibson. <laughs> and great everybody form. says that to me. Yeah. Slim attributes you to yeah. start. And I don't even remember these days. Got his drinks. He drink. He's drunk on the day. So when well, he told a... me to go up, it most probably actually was trying to ruin my life. It oh, just like it worked out for me. That's what most probably was going to do, you know. But Slim was like a bus driver. I just remember Slim could drive anything. Lorry, when it was bus. tank, lorry, bus. And we had gigs, me and Ishmael had gigs all over the country. And Slim, we used to get, like them days you hire sometimes, hire a car. Yeah. And then you'd say, Slim, come, come, man. And Slim was driving. And I was like, wow, I was better. Driver, man. Okay. And then you could relax and enjoy yourself. And then I don't even remember the day that Slim started doing comedy because he was always funny, innit? it? Yeah. So you'd thinking, and people say, oh, Slim says you start. About well, a year after following you guys up, yeah. and up and down, one of the first gigs I went to was in Liverpool. Yeah. With you guys, um, yourself, Felix Dexter, Felix, Sheila Hyde. Yeah, there was a I few. Remember, do you remember? Yeah, remember, you remember the in the, and went. that was a really, really good gig because I'd never actually been um, to a theatre in the first place. Bar school, I, I'd never gone to the theatre to watch anything. Really? No, seriously, I just, I don't know. Maybe because I couldn't sit still so long. Play, plays can be quite long when you're eight, nine years old. Yeah. So. Uh, so I'd never been in a theatre, so going there was a big occasion for me. And for me to sit down in the audience and, you know, watch you guys destroying it, especially like, you know, you know somebody and you're watching them doing something and there's an audience that don't know them. And yeah. you can see those people that don't know them appreciate them. Mm -hmm. So although I'm watching you on stage, I'm also kind of looking at everyone's laughing, how much they're enjoying. And you get more pride right, right. in yeah, watching yeah. you guys do that. And you lot done it so excellently. I still didn't even think of about being a comedian. Oh, why don't you do that? I just never thought of myself as that kind of level. Yeah. You remember there's funny amongst your friends yeah. in the pub. That's a different thing completely. And then, so, yeah. you know, the, uh, my mind went, oh, they're funny, I'm funny, so I can do what they yeah. just didn't have it. Your first time was on Hackney? Uh, yeah. Wow. So I do things by halves, do you? Wow. <laughs> so I've always dressed for us. And even though you don't remember, I know, but there's a lot I don't remember. You know? No, no, no listen, it goes like yeah. that in life. Yeah. All the people, when you started, mm. There was no black comedy circuit no. as such. The no, black comic. I sat down with Felix Dexter many times. Yeah, and we yeah. talked because Felix was in the the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like um, comic strip. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yeah. Comic yeah. Strip. yeah, They all did their world up in North London. They had a world. I think I know. Very trendy and very hip. And then Alexis Sayo was blowing up at the comedy sure. store. That's right. That generation, but they were older than us. And they were. What was their thing was? Oh, it's a, it's a language, but. They did it as brand new style of comedy. Alternative. Alternative, yeah. And we used to look at that and say, boy, you want to come and see where we're performing to see really alternative comedy. Because it wasn't that far removed from what we'd been watching on telly, what they were doing, because it's a group of white people yeah, yeah. being funny to a group of white people. And that wasn't alternative to anybody. Come down to, where were we, Albany? They're more political. They were more political back then. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them were, and a lot of them weren't. I mean, Alexis said I really enjoyed because he was kind of off. Cuff, he was just off the wall a little bit weird, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit twisted, and I kind of like that in my comedy, you know. Um, and the, the, prior to that, it was punchlines, gag set up, punchlines, yeah. gag set up, punchlines. Hey, yo, I wouldn't say my wife was fat, but you know, <laughs> it was that kind of humor. It's like the comedians, was yeah, it? yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why going back to Dave Allen, who told stories, and culturally, that's where I kind of came from. It was the storytelling, you know, it was more the Irish, you know, the Irish, yeah, yeah, it's a lot about storytelling rather than the punchline. But then in our culture, it's either the music or something. There's a rhythm to it and a storytelling, which in England was really hard to sell. Because I remember being in production companies and you're writing and you're doing stuff. And then the, the, the editor would say, well, where's the jokes? And we're saying, well, that, the build-up is the whole of it is the joke. The whole of it, you're telling a story. Also how you perform it as well, and isn't it? it? But their formats yeah, like bang, 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 bang. bang was a battle, they couldn't get it until it was in front of an audience and they'd see audiences laughing, but on paper, they couldn't see the humour. Yeah. So you really struggled to pitch your voice. ideas. They exactly, voice, right. exactly. So you look at Pryor, you look at Eddie Murphy, you break it down into joke jokes, they're not there. Mm. They really, like Pryor was a great storyteller with humour in the story. And in Britain, that was alien, that, that rhythm of a joke was alien to it. Now everybody's doing it, but yeah. you know, Back then, trying to sell that on paper was such a hard battle, man. 
and you'd meet resistance every time just to get an idea of. I remember we wrote a treatment, and it was brilliant. I, I mean, I'll say it because we wrote it, but it was brilliant. <laughs> and then they didn't get it. They didn't get it. And it was about audience dealing with, like, this was before anybody was doing it. The audience were part of the show, so you'd have a set, set up, but you'd walk out of the set and go okay. into the audience and talk to the audience, and it was all really intricate, but they could not understand how we'd broken that third wall. They didn't get it. it was, and then years, years later, you see the same premise being used everywhere, and you're thinking, boy, because of the gatekeepers, you're, 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 you're held up, not just us as individuals, but the, the culture of our comedy yeah. has been held up. It's like now, as I'm older, I'm looking at some of the younger comics, and I feel it's gone further backwards. In the, really? Yeah, in the evolution of it. I think it's, it's struggled because we haven't created... That journey was harder for yeah. us to get to. Because I work in America sometimes, you know, you go to America years ago, and the American comics think we're 30 years behind them. And it insulted me. I felt really offended by that. But I get it. I understand. Because but it's different. Like, other comedy here is different. Isn't yeah. It? It's going to be different. You know? But it's different from America. But yeah, if you look at your TV channels, every sitcom is an American sitcom in Britain. Every sitcom is. We American. understand the humour. We do got different kind of styles, I think. Yeah. But funny is funny when it boils down to it. First of all, I had to thank Annette Fagan, because she was the one who got me onto the Black Circuit. Oh, okay. Annette yeah, Fagan yeah. is brilliant, if you've never met her. Annette, we love Annette. She's great. And I think, um, and it was like my first ever gig was for John Simmett, who's a wonderful promoter, yeah. upfront comedy. Was that when your first ever gig was with John? John Simmett and Felix Dexter, who was wow. like headliner. Wow. And um, it was like the first time I had to do 25 minutes. I did not have 25 minutes, but it was a lot of money, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I was yeah. semi-pro those days. Yeah. And you know, you kind of go, oh, I'm going to wing it. I'm just going to wing it. And I'd never done a black gig before. And it was at the Bernie Grant Centre in Tottenham. And I was panicking because I thought, I haven't got 25 minutes. But luckily, I just bantered with the audience. Yeah, yeah. And I was saying to you earlier, the reason is like, I, even though I don't look it, because I look like I'm about to go on my first cruise. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's true. And um, <laughs> thanks. Um, but I, I went to an all black school, so, uh, predominantly black school, so I didn't have any white friends until I was 18. And so I think, and we were saying this earlier, I was discussing this with a mate of mine, who's a black journalist, is that he said to me, oh, you can tell that you grew up around black people. And I was like, but how? Yeah. And he went, because you, you're comfortable. Yeah, 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 that's and, so true. That is very important, and, and, and it's true. That was actually a good point, because I couldn't, and it's true, black people can tell if you've grown up around yeah, white people, yeah. uh, sorry, you've grown uh, up around black yeah. people, because you're just comfortable. So like, when I walked into that audience, they were mainly my age, and though I'd grown up in a different part of London, we'd probably gone to the same clubs, listened to the same music. Oh, we clubs. said about the clubs. We Come on. Talk about gossips and Jean Pierre. Gossip, moonlighting. <laughs> you know, got case to weekenders, yeah, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it's a very, so like they're the type of people I grew up with. So ironically, when I went to university and I was like middle class white people, like my music was like, they didn't know my music. Yeah. They had a Lovers Rock collection. They'd never heard of Carol Thompson or Janet Kay. You know, they hadn't heard of Kenny Burke or you know, Atlantic Star. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it was my kind of, so I actually feel quite comfortable in that situation. And I think that's what people know. They, when I walk on stage, I think, oh, management, you know, I'm gonna go, uh, car, Volvos, double parked it, you know. Because yeah. they look at me, as I say. You've had problems getting into you know, venues, yeah. haven't you? Uh, yeah, you were there. I was doing a big gig at O2 at the Indigo. And security wouldn't let me in because they didn't believe I was one of the comics because I was the only woman on the bill. Yeah. I think White Yard the other white. Africa girl. versus the West like Indies. Africa, Jamaica, or something stupid like that. And um, they wouldn't let me in. How does that work? Who are you representing? Oh. <laughs> Honestly, this was because they didn't tell me it was called that because I would have pointed out that there's yeah. something wrong with that. They told me it was like comedy Wahala, which is yeah. fine, yeah. right? I get then it's like Jamaica versus Africa. So they spent half an hour going Jamaica versus, you know, all yeah. this stuff. Yeah. They go, first act. I was the first act, oh, wow. right? Representing Team Jamaica. And in my head, I'm thinking, what, during the colonial period? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, it? it's South London. It's like there's, there's a shortage of Jamaicans in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in South London. It's like, wow. I was just like. And you smashed it, didn't and you? I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Why have you called it this? Or why have you booked me for like Jamaica versus... What but see, the why versus... attitude there, why have they called it this yeah. and know I'm coming? <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of money, it's a lot of money, isn't it? I'm going to turn down the money. Well, but like, uh, I couldn't get in. So I'm kind of thinking, this is a lot of money, isn't it? And honestly, security loved my face when I said... Because I think they thought I was just some middle-aged white woman trying to get in for free. They like, tried to blag it. <laughs> I could not get in. It was hilarious. And it's happened to me like a couple of times. I remember once I said to security, I went, look, I'm the white woman on the poster. 
He went, you can't say that. I went, no, no, I can say it. You can't. <laughs> and they raised you up through the white woman on the posters here. We've got the white woman on the poster. In lockdown, it taught me how hard the socials are. I had no respect for those com comedians who did it all online. I had no respect for them, really, I'm going to be honest. But then when lockdown happened and everybody was having to get online to generate some kind of income, I realised you have to have the energy. Work. You have to get up in the morning with it's an idea. a lot of work. Be creative straight away and then do all the effort it takes to put the camera there, to put the costume or get dressed, get the mindset right and do it if you're going to do it well. No, if it's you know done I mean? well, it's you cannot knock, knock, knock it. So I come out of lockdown with a lot more respect for them. Still can't do it, but I've got a lot more respect <laughs> for them, boy. Like, damn, that's a lot. But also, I turn to me, like, people who do the social media stuff, yeah. then they try and go on stage, oh. and it's a completely different thing, because to hold an audience... Yeah, uh, you know, some of these gigs are really big gigs, yeah. you know, O2, whatever. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's, it takes that's years a, of experience. It's a skill, isn't it? And skill. that's what I think, once you've... Because people come and see you, because you've been online and you've got 100,000 followers, and then you get on stage and you've probably got two minutes of material, but you're booked for 25? Yeah. I've seen it so many times. I find it hilarious because I love people dying on stage. It's, <laughs> and I think... I and enjoy, I don't. I feel I, so... I enjoy that more. It'd be like... Uh, you can't I enjoy tap that more. in. You're watching someone getting an absolute yeah. thrashing. Yeah. You know, like wrestling. And you love stretch it. out your hand to get tapped in so you uh, can go in the ring and, and you can't do nothing. I With comedy, you it. literally have to watch another soldier die by himself. Yeah. yeah. You literally can't save him. Oh, this no, is my, my favourite. There's nothing worse when you die and then you, you watch, you've got 18 minutes left. Let yeah. me tell you. You think, oh, that's the audience. Yeah. I don't think he's good at training. But the, the, that's what I'm saying. It's, a, it's like you say, the skill of being in front of an audience is so unique. You have to be in front of an audience to gain that skill. And that takes years. the social guys, they just can't do it, man. No. No. Because what? Yeah. Do, do, do you that? know what? I died well, and I had to get on a coach for six hours with the audience that I died in front of. Yeah, that's the one that's <laughs> driving. That was a long Then there's the one with the cruises. Oh, yeah. You do a cruise. You're walking around. I, I was over with an act, I'm not going to name him, but he died, man. But you're dying, like, for about a week and a half <laughs> to the same audience, three, three, shows a, three shows a day. You're dying, and then you got to get up and have breakfast with them in the morning. Yeah. The captain came and said, look, could you... And they had to ask him to go and eat somewhere else because the... The, the crew, the people were complaining he's killing the mood at breakfast. At <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> and they are, oh, man. I would love to say I was there for him and supported okay, him through it. I couldn't. Cast you said, Look, would you move over there? You're putting me up. <laughs> I'd be so upset as a comedian say, oh, could you eat over there? The whole crew's in the, in the casino upstairs just spinning off the little wages that they were going to do that anyway. It is. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's the making of us. The audience after that is... is, is oh, that it's the making of you. It is the making of you. You know, you, you die, man. You know, because, look, you know... Everyone, like, do you, you die? Because I've never seen you have a bad gig. I've had bad gigs, I'm getting really right? annoyed about it. I was really annoyed. Yeah, no, I've never done. You know, I don't, I don't think I've been booed or shouted off, but you have gigs where the audience is a bit quiet or a joke that you think was going to hit. You ever done that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just like, you get nothing. Well, I call it dying, but I like the way you... No, no, I like no, the way no, you no. spun it. For me, the dying... The just a bit quiet. Yeah, yeah, no, dying is... Hello? Hello? From the whole start of the show to the end? No, nah, never. I've positive, never had that. Positive thing. Never. The audience never, are a bit quiet. The acoustics you've, weren't You've right. had the whole 20 I minutes, no one laughing. I've, I've died, man. I've the died. whole 20 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. I've never had that. I've, I've died, I've died. I've, I've, died. I've, died. I've done a room where it's just not going to work. Just not going to work. I've had and one. I've been there and given it. Just this ain't going to happen. I've bits some pieces, but it just wasn't the same. Tell me, you get back and you're like, OK, OK, this back will work. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I did a gig once when they turned it off, but they loved it for the first 10 minutes, and I did an ad lib. It didn't like the ad lib. Yeah. And I could not win the back. Yeah. It was just... And you see it when other acts do it. It's so obvious. But when you do it, you're like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? This is what makes us as comedians... Um, connoisseurs. A, connoisseurs. We're connoisseurs, sir. Uh, connoisseurs. Yeah. Well, you've got to remember, we are people that present ourselves in front of a room full of ultimately strangers. Yeah. And you've got 20 minutes, only a short given time, from you step on stage to step in off, to actually make them laugh. And I don't know where... I mean, we could take anyone in here open a pub door, say, go in that pub, yeah. got 20 minutes, make them laugh and I'll meet you outside. Yeah. That is, we're put on the spot, the pressure, 
and we actually love it and thrive from it but looking actually at the work itself and yeah. what we do i've got to give myself yourself yourself and every other comic out there trying to make people laugh yeah.